question from a fan on Discord. Can we draw the cis and trans isomers of this admittedly complicated molecule, 4-ethyl-2,3-dimethyl-oct-2-ene? The strategy I have for drawing cis and trans isomers is, step one, draw the backbone of the molecule horizontally. We're going to then figure out what is connected to each of the carbons, especially around the double bond, and then we're going to attach substituents or hydrogens or whatever on either the same or opposite side of that double bond. The backbone here is oct to ene, which means we have an eight carbon chain with a double bond starting at carbon two. So one, two, that's carbon two. So that's where the double bond starts. That's one, two, three now. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, all the bonds when a carbon is single bonded are 109.5 degrees in three dimensions. And around a double bond, they're actually 120 degrees. So it, the molecule's never perfectly horizontal like this, but we're doing this as a visual play. Here's the backbone, here's carbon two. Now I can attach all the other stuff, right? On carbon four, I'm supposed to have an ethyl group. That's safe to attach simply because it's not where the double bond is. An ethyl group is a CH2, CH3. And then it also says 2,3-dimethyl. Carbons 2 and 3 are where the double bond is. And so it's these methyl groups that are either cis or trans to each other. Cis means that you'll find those two things, those two methyl groups, on the same side of the double bond. And when I say same side, I mean if it's drawn horizontally like this, they're like both on the top side or both on the bottom side. Now I'm gonna put them both on the top side. A methyl group is a CH3, and then here's another CH3. Again, the molecule is not officially bent exactly this way. These bond angles are supposed to be 120 when you have a double bond like that, but this helps the teacher realize that you know what cis is. Now, to do trans, I'm going to do basically the exact same thing until that last step. I first need my backbone. That's seven, eight carbons in a row. Carbon four has an ethyl group on it. And then if I need the trans isomer, one of the methyl groups has to be above the, the line of the molecule, and one has to be below. It doesn't matter if the first one's below and the next one's above. What matters is that they're on opposite sides. Now, to complete the structural diagram, you're supposed to add hydrogen so that each carbon has four bonds total. Um, these carbons don't need extra bonds because they already have one, two, three, four, the way that it's drawn. But here you go. Here are your cis and trans isomers. It's a beautiful thing. Now, if you are... Um, um, in a more advanced chemistry course, like a university level one, you'll know that we, we actually call these Z and E isomers um, instead of cis and trans. Cis and trans only work when you have two of the same thing oriented opposite or on the same side as each other. And you'll also note that this is a chiral carbon. So there's both E and, sorry, R and S isomers around that chiral carbon. That wasn't asked for here. I think this is a grade 12 question here in Ontario. I hope it was clear. And, uh, you know, just before I, ra I rack up the pencil here, I'm going to label them as cis and trans, just in case you didn't catch which was which. Hey, thanks for being with me, and best of luck.